I did it. I collected all the legendary creatures out of Legends. And in this video, I'm going to talk all about it. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. I'm just so happy that I finally finished the 55 legendary creature collection. These are the first legendary creatures in the game of magic. And, you know, it all started with the set Legends. And uh, maybe it's, it's good to first start talking about the actual Elder Dragons here. What I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to build it up a little bit, add some structure to it. I'm first going to talk about the Elder Dragons, show the Elder Dragons to you. Then I'm going to talk about the three cards that share the same colors as the Elder Dragon. And then I'm going to go through all the uh, cards that have two colors. So the first golden cards in the game of Magic, which, which is really, really special. I mean, I think Legends brought so much to the game. I mean, these days, the most popular way to play, let me just get the camera right. The most popular way to play is, um, you know, EDH, Commander, I guess people call it. And that all derives from this era of magic, you know, at EDH stands for Elder Dragon Highlander. Well, these are your Elder Dragons and Highlander stands for there can be only one. So only one of in your deck. There actually used to be a show in the 90s called Highlander. That's where it's uh, where it probably came from the term Highlander. And I mean, I remember playing that as well. We didn't play with Elder Dragons. We used to have a hundred card Highlander deck or sometimes the deck would be 200 cards or whatever. Just the cool cards that you had a one-off and you would all put them together in a deck. And later the Elder Dragons got involved. So let me first have a look at the Elder Dragons. And here we have the five Elder Dragons, right? I've taken them out of the sleeve for a moment for some closer inspection. I'm just going to talk about them one at a time. So here we have Arcadis Sabbath. And uh, this one is flying. All the Elder Dragons have flying. They're all 7-7. Seven, seven but then they all have some special ability. So this one, you can actually give plus O plus one until end of turn, so you can pump it. And also your untapped creatures gain plus O plus two. And attacking creatures do not get the bonus, right? But all your untapped creatures gain at plus O plus two, which is pretty cool. It's kind of like a castle effect. And when you read the lore of the Elder Dragons, Arcadis Sabbath was actually really good with people, which is, I think, one of the reasons why he's given them these boosts he used to work together with the people and kind of create a peaceful, you know, peaceful city. So that's Arcadis Sabbath. And then we've got Chromium. So Chromium, a Flyer 7-7 seven, seven, with the Rampage ability. So Rampage 2. Remember at the time when they made Legends, they thought Rampage would be maybe even overpowered. So perhaps you don't know what, what Rampage does now that I'm talking about it. Uh, what it does is if you, the creature gets blocked by more than one, Creature, then Rampage gets activated. So Rampage 2 means for every creature more than one blocking it, it gets plus 2, plus 2. If it would be Rampage 1, it would get plus 1, plus 1. So it was considered a really good ability because it makes it really hard to kill a big creature like this with just a single creature because there are not a lot of creatures in the game that fly and that you can make 7-7. Seven, seven. I mean, you would need a Lord of the Pit to kill the Chromium, right? So that's Chromium, and then we've got Nico Bolas, the ultimate bad guy of magic. So this is Flying 7-7, seven, seven, of course, as well. And the special ability of Nico Bolas is an opponent damaged by Bolas must discard the entire hand. And I think that's that's probably one of the strongest abilities um, of the Elder Dragons. I think Nico Bolas has that one. And of course, you can build a whole discard theme deck around this. You, there, there are a lot of cards and you can play with cards like direct to punish your opponent for not having a lot of cards in hand. Then we've got Palladia Morse. So Palladia Morse flying again, 7-7 seven, seven again. They all have an upkeep cost that's uh, identical to their um, uh, color identity, right? So this one has white, uh, green, and red. And for example, Nico Bolas has blue, black, and red. Now, the good thing about this card is that it's got green and it's a trampler. So, you know, green means you'll put a giant growth on this. You've got a 10 10 trampler that's going to attack. If you then also have a berserk, it's basically the end of the game, right? Well, that is if you're playing with 20 life. I guess when you're playing a Highlander like EDH like format, you'll probably play with 30 life or even more. Palladium more. So the trample makes it pretty useful. 
And then we have the Victus Asmati. So the Victus Asmati, you can pump it any way you want to. Well, you can only give it power, by the way. So for one black, plus one, plus O, for one red, plus one, plus O, for a green, plus one, plus O. So you've got a fire breathing activity, uh, ability, I should say, that you can activate with black and green mana as well, which is completely unique. I mean, you, you've got the card fire breathing and dragons have fire breathing. In that sense, it's kind of strange that not all these dragons have a fire breathing ability. Uh, but I do like the idea from a design point of view that they gave, gave each elder dragon their own little unique ability. I do really like that. And one of the things that they did too is they gave each elder dragon three what I call captains. So three cards that share the, um, the mana colors. And here we see the captains of Vivictus Asmadi. So three cards that share the color identity. And actually, these are quite good. You've got Edun Oakenshield. As you can see, this is an Italian copy. Uh, so for one green, one red, one black, you get a one-two creature with a pretty useful ability because you can pay a green, a red, and a black, and you can tap it. And then you can return target creature from your graveyard to your hand. So this is quite nice. For example, you see being played with decks uh, the play of Bull Lightning or other creatures that you want to return from your graveyard and then play out again. So it's a pretty useful little creature. And then you've got Bartol Rune X, and Bartol Rune X is kind of a unique creature. It's six to cast, so almost as expensive as the Elder Dragon, Elder Dragon being eight to cast. And Bartol Rune X has this unique ability because it cannot be targeted by enchant creature spells, which is very relevant in old school because a lot of people play with control magic. You cannot control magic this card, which is quite quite nice. Another thing is, attacking does not cause Bartol Rune X to tap. There are not a lot of creatures that have this ability. So you can attack with it, and at the same time, you can use it as a blocker, which is really good for such a big creature, 6-5. And then we've got Xida Adian, again, a useful card. So all three of these captains, in my opinion, are quite useful. Xida Adian, green, red, and black, flying a 1-2 summon legend, and then for a green, a red, and a black and tap, you can draw a card. So that's one mana less than the Jam Day Tome, and Jam Day Tome is super po powerful and playable in old school. So you can imagine if you've got the right mana, which I mean, you've got access to green, you've got access to cards like Birds of Paradise to get the right mana, Untamed Wilds to find the lands you need. So it should be possible to kind of, you know, get the mana you need to draw an extra card every turn. So this is actually an old school one of the, the more useful and also more fun commanders to play with because in old school, it's kind of harder to draw cards than it is in, in Magic the way it is now, right? And drawing cards means you have options. Drawing cards is fun. So I love the fact that this is in a non-blue color in old school and it, it allows you to draw cards. So it's just, uh, it's fantastic. Okay, now let's continue with the other three captains, the captains of Palladia Moors. And here we see the captains of Palladia Moor. So again, three. And um, I'm just going to start with, I think, probably the most interesting one, Hazazan Tamar. Again, this is an Italian copy because these are so expensive now if you want to have an English copy. Um, this is seven to cast, right, which is huge. And it's only a 2-4. But the ability is super cool because when it comes into play during your next turn's upkeep, you get 1-1 one, one Warrior Sand Tokens that are white, green, and red, and you get the amount of tokens equal to the number of lands you control. So if you've got like 10 lands, you get 10 1-1 one, one creatures, which is huge, right? Making tokens in old school magic is very, very difficult, and with this card, you actually can. Now, there is a little bit of a downside. When the Hazazan dies, all your Sand Warrior tokens die, but there is a way around this because you don't get the um, tokens until your next upkeep, what you can do is you can play Hazaz on Tamar, then bounce it back to your hand, right? Um, and then the next turn's upkeep, you're gonna get the Sand Warriors and the Sand Warriors are not linked to your Hazaz on of Tamar. So then you can play the Hazaz on of Tamar again, you can get Sand Warriors again. And then if your opponent kills your Hazaz on, you don't lose the Sand Warrior tokens off the first time when you cast the Tamar. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm explaining it that clearly. I hope you can follow. But to make a long story short, if you can bounce the Tamar at the right time, your Sand Warrior tokens won't be linked to the Hazazon Tamar. 
So uh, this is really a cool card. You know, when you have so many tokens, what can you do with it? Maybe you can sack them to Astronaut's Altar to make a huge fireball. Maybe you can play cards like Gauntlet of Might to give them plus one, plus one. Because remember, they are considered white, red, and green, right? You can play Angelic Voices to pump them up more. There's just a ton of really cool stuff you can do with them. I think this is probably the coolest captain in this color type. Um, but yeah, okay, this is an interesting card as well. Jacques Levert has that um, that castle ability that Arcadia Sabbath has as well. So it gives plus O plus two to all your green creatures. So only your green creatures, not all your creatures. Um, but it is it is pretty cool if you maybe you know, can combine this in a Thalid deck where you make a lot of tokens as well. And remember, Hazes on Tomar's Sand Warrior tokens are also green, so they benefit from this bonus. And then you've got Johan, and Johan is a 5-4 for 6 mana. So actually, it's interesting, right? All these cards are quite costly if you compare them to the uh, captains of Evictus Asmadi. There's not a single one that's only costing 3 mana. Um, but let's take a look. So Johan, this one's English again. Uh, it says, if Johan does not attack and is not tapped, any of your creatures may attack without tapping. It's a nice little 5-4, so it gives all your creatures vigilance as long as it's not attacking as well. Again, in the token strategy, this can be quite good. So, actually, these cards, they can kind of work together, which is which is interesting. Again, you can all put them together in the deck. I'm liking this. I, this makes me want to build a deck right now. Anyway, uh, let's continue to look at the captains of the ultimate bad guy, Nicole Bolas. And here we see the three captains of Nico Bolas, right? The ultimate bad guy. And again, these are three really good cards. We've got Gwendolyn de Gorci. Again, this is an Italian copy. A 3-5 for 4 mana. Now, those are good start stats in old school. Remember, an Iron Root Tree Folk is 5 mana with the same stats and doesn't even have an ability because his ability is really good. When it's your turn, you can tap Gwendolyn de Gorci and you can force your opponent to discard a card, right? So it's like a disrupting scepter. You don't have to pay any costs to do that. I mean, this is a really, really good card. And then we have Sulkanar, the Swamp King. Again, very playable. Five mana for a 5-5 five, five with no downsides. That is kind of unique in old school. Usually when you have a big creature, like for example, Lord of the Pit, I mean, there's a, a ridiculous upkeep cost involved. But here there's no upkeep cost. As a matter of fact, there are two good abilities that makes the card even better. So it's got Swamp Walk, and you also gain one life each time a black spell is being cast. So that can be yourself or anybody else at the table. And that kind of ticks up. I've played with this card before, and in multiplayer, I was really surprised how much life gain I got from a single Sulkanar. And then, yeah, this card is so cool. Only three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. Again, those are great stats in old school. Remember, a Hail Giant is four mana for a 3-3. Three, three. One red, one black, one black, one blue, tap, destroy target, tap creature, or target blocking creature. So, I mean, this is better than a Royal Assassin, right? Well, yeah, I think yeah, I think it is. Well, the thing is, you need all the manas. I mean, four mana for the ability, that's a lot, but... If you can pay that, it's really good. And again, Tetsuo may not be a target of an enchant creature spell. So it's protected from Paralyze, it's protected from weakness, you know, but it's also protected again from that control magic that is, is that you see so often in old school. So it's really nice that this card, uh, together with Bartle Runex, this one cannot be enchanted. I think that's just a super cool ability that again, you don't see that often in old school uh, magic creatures. It's really, really unique. Remember, in this era of magic, you didn't have Hexproof, you didn't have, what's that other thing called again? I forgot, but I mean, it was really difficult to protect your creatures from um, from enchant creature spells. So this is this is a really useful addition to the card. It's really good, uh, good uh, ability that the card has. Okay, and now we're going to the other Elder Dragon, Chromium. Let's look at the Captains of Chromium. And here we see the Captains of Chromium. So we've got Deccan Blackblade, Half Dane, and Lady Evangela. So let's start with Deccan Blackblade. All these are Italian, by the way. So Deccan Blackblade, very interesting card. Um, it's got power and toughness equal to the amounts of lands you control. So it's it's you really feel like you would want to play these together in a deck because in both uh, with both creatures it pays off to have a lot of lands 
on the battlefield, but of course they do have a different color identity. So deck and black blade, really nice. If you've got 10 basic lands or just 10 lands in general, it's a 10-10, which is quite nice. And then you have to find a way to give it trample, I guess, maybe adding green for berserk would be quite nice. And then we have Half Dane. So Half Dane, again, super interesting card. Uh, this is an Italian copy, so four to cast. So one white, one blue, one black, one. And it's power and toughness equal to Asterix's. And that is because it has power and toughness equal to another creature in place. During your upkeep, you can choose target creature and it gets that power and toughness. If you don't, it is just a 3-3 creature. Um, but yeah, if you do, you can copy any creature on the board. So for example, you could copy your Deccan and then you've got all of a sudden, if you've got two, uh, 10 lands, you've got two 10-10 creatures on the board, which is pretty powerful. Add a Sword of the Ages and it's the end of the game. And then we've got Lady Evangela. Lady Evangela, it's so interesting because her ability is kind of unique. I guess she's white, so that gives her the healing ability uh, because what she does, she's a one, two for one white, one blue, one black. Uh, pay a black and a white, tap her, and then target creature doesn't deal combat damage. So it's kind of a fog effect, but then just limit it to one creature. So this could be super useful in combat situations and super annoying for your opponent. Okay, we've talked about four of the Elder Dragons and their captains. We've got one left. Let's take a look at the captains of the Arcades 7. And here we see the three captains of the Arcades Sabbath Elder Dragon. And uh, the first one may be the most interesting one of the bunch, Angus McKenzie. Uh, it looks a lot like Tim the Enchanter, doesn't it? Very cool card. This is an Italian copy again. One green, one blue, one white. And what it can do, you can pay a green, a blue, and a white. It's a 2-2, two -two, by the way. You can tap it, and then it prevents all combat damage that would be dealt this turn. So it's kind of like a fog on a stick which is really nice, like it's it's super interesting and of course you can do a lot of fun stuff with an ability like that. And then we also have Ragnar and uh, same casting cost uh, and you can again pay the casting cost of Ragnar itself to 2-2, tap it and then regenerate target creature. Regeneration can be quite powerful in old school. And then we also have Rubinia Soul Singer, now Rubinia Soul Singer is pretty good it's five to cast it's also it's a two three i thought it was a two two when you tap it you can gain control of target creature and you can keep rubinia soul singer tapped so as long as she's tapped you keep control of the creature when it gets untapped you lose control or if rubinia soul singer loses um gets destroyed that's what i'm trying to say so if you would tear rubinia soul singer you lose control but it's pretty sweet, and it's also a way of stealing those creatures that cannot be enchanted. For example, the Bartle Rune Axe, I can't target it, so I can't steal it with my Rubinia Soul Singer. Rubinia Soul Singer is, you know, one of, I think, one of the stronger commanders in the format, probably together with, with Tetsuo and Solkanar, cards like that. Um, because you can make a whole steel theme deck around it, also play with cards like Preacher. Uh, you can play with Bounce Effects as well. It's just. Um, it's very strong. And then, of course, when you have a sack outlet, so you steal a creature of the opponent, and then, for example, you sack it to your Diamond Valley, you know, you just uh, gain a lot of life and kill creatures of your opponent in the process. So that's, that's a pretty good combination. Anyway, these are the three captains of the Arcade Sabbath. I've now discussed all the captains with you, and that means we're going to dive into the duo golden cards, right? And we're going to start with green and with white. So from the double colors, we have seven in each set. So these are seven as well. So we've got seven that have uh, are white and green. We've got seven that are blue and white. We've got seven that are black and blue. We've got seven that are black and red. And we've got seven that are green and red. So seven each, we're gonna go through them a little bit quicker than the captains. So Gabriel Angel Fire, this card could be quite useful, but it's seven to cast. It's ridiculous, seven to cast. What it does for seven, you get a four, four. Um, and then to the beginning of your upkeep, so it's Italian this one again. So it's gonna be kind of hard for me to kind of memorize. What does it do again? So during your upkeep, you can give it an ability. And I believe this is um, Rampage three. I recognize because of the number, but you can also give it um, flying, first strike um, or trample. 
Yeah, Flying First Strike, Trample or Rampage 3. That's what you can do. So I think if this card would have been, for example, 5 to cast, uh, it, it would be playable. Because it's pretty cool that it's so flexible you can choose one of those abilities. Um, and then we've got Jasmine. So Jasmine is just one of your vanilla creatures, 4 or 5, for 5 mana. And then we've got Kai Taka, Takahashi. Kai Takahashi. We can tap it to prevent up to 2 damage to target creature. For 4 mana for 2-2, two, two, so not great. And then we've got Lady Caleria. And uh, again, an Italian version, you can tap it to deal 3 damage to target blocking or attacking creature. Now this, I mean, again, it's 7 to cast, which is pretty steep, but at least it's got a 3-6 stat. So it's really hard to kill, and it can be really annoying to play against. So later in the game, this can actually be quite a good card, especially in multiplayer, because there are so many moments in the game where you will have a blocker or attacker to target with so many players. Um, Lord Magnus, yeah. So again, very costly. It's a 4-3 for 6. I wish it would be a 4-4, four, because four, at least then it wouldn't be boltable. It's first strike, and creatures with planeswalk or forest walk may be blocked as if they did not have either ability. And actually, an old school land walk is really a thing, and planeswalk not so much, but forest walk it can be quite useful being protected from forest walk. For example, if you play with Urnum Jin and with Lord Magnus, then the forest walk doesn't really matter for you anymore. And then we've got Sir Chandelar. Now I got I always got to think of the game Chandelar. So uh, a four seven four six. That's all it is. But it's a really cool card. Really cool art. Reminds me a little bit of Alliances. And then we've got Torsten von Orsus again, a vanilla creature. But what I love about this, remember these. I actually haven't mentioned that yet. But these legendary creatures, a lot of them were based on the Dungeon and Dragons campaigns that the creators uh, were in themselves. So I think a lot of those names derive from there. So even though it's just a vanilla creature, it really speaks to the imagination. And, you know, you got to, when you've got time, you know, take a moment to read the flavor texts of these cards. They're, they're, they're usually pretty awesome and pretty cool. And now that we've talked about the first batch, let's continue with the other color combinations. So we've got white, uh, blue and white, seven cards again. So in each color combination, we have seven. And uh, this is Ayesha Tamaka, or Tanaka, it's actually an Tanaka. Two blue, two white to cast for a summon legend with banding a 2-2. You can tap it an artifact effect which requires an activation cost is countered unless his controller spends a white. This ability is played as an interrupt. And this instantly reminds me of the one time I had an IC into play and my opponent has this Ayesha and I wasn't playing with white. It was super annoying, you know, it's one of those things where your opponent activates the ability and you go, it does what? Can I have a look? I mean, it's a little bit like a rust uh, on a stick, isn't it? Like, it's quite quite interesting. Um, and then we have Costa Dirk. I love the colors of the Italian print. Look at that. You know what? I'm going to take it out of the, the sleeve. I mean, look at those colors. Look at the art. I mean, the art and the colors are awesome. The card itself, it's not so. It's As you can see, it's got a super high casting cost. So what do you think... The power and toughness is going to be for seven casting costs, including double blue and double white. It's a 4-4. Four, four. That's all you're going to get. It's a 4-4. Four, four. It does have some abilities, though. It's, it's first strike. Uh, that's Attacco Impreviso. And um, I believe it can block creatures with Island Walk. Um... Yeah, yeah. It can block creatures with Island Walk. That's it. Yeah, so that's a special ability. <laughs> It's so funny. If you know the lore, is there lore behind it? Is there a reason why Costa Dirk? I love the name of this card as well, by the way. Why he can he can block creatures with Island Walk? He looks like a badass Viking, so he probably, you know, he hunts for them. I think it should say tap destroy target creature with island walk, kind of like Merfolk Assassin. Or when it attacks, it fights target creature with island walk. Something like that, because it looks so aggressive. Anyway, that's Costa Dirk. Uh, oh, another legendary creature hunting Gjornarsson. Look at the casting cost of these things. Six again for a 5-4. Okay, that's, that's a little bit better. And it's got Rampage 1. I already talked about Rampage in this video. Uh, it, it's At least it's something, you know. And Rampage in this color combination, you don't actually see it that often. It's usually uh, limited to green creatures. There are some red creatures with Rampage as well. 
Uh, ah, then you've got Jaded Oyanin. This is just a vanilla creature for seven. You get a five, five. So these cards you purely play for flavor because it's just such a cool character and that's why you want to play them. And then we've got, talking about cool characters, Casimir the Lone Wolf. I love, I just love it. I love the art. I love the wolf in the back. I mean, it's kind of a man turning into a wolf, isn't it? Six mana for a 5-3 though. I think it should have at least banding with other wolves because there are some wolves in the game. You also have... Um, Master of the Hunt in Legends, and it, there should be some synergy between those two. Talking about it now, how interesting is it that you've got a lone wolf that's actually not green at all? You already have, I guess you also have Tundra Wolves in, um, in white in Legends, so I guess they kind of explored having wolves in other colors than green. Ah, I guess it's interesting. Um, then we've got Tobias, and again, just a vanilla, five mana for a 4-4, four, four, which is really good stats. I mean, compare that with this dude, Costa Dirk, was a 4-4 four, for four, four, seven mana, so at least it's a 4-4 four, four, for five. I think from a design point of view, you could have said, uh, maybe make it two white and two blue and make it a 4-4 four, four, for four, right? Because then the downside is that you need specific colors to cast it, but the upside is that you get you get better stats in return. That would have made more sense to me. Um, oh, this card, Rasputin Dreamweaver, yeah. This is one of the last cards I acquired to finish my Legend set because it was so expensive. It is a super interesting card and I'm actually gonna uh, look it up here just to see what it does again. So this is Italian. It's a 4-1, I know it works with a lot of counters. The art, it's so freaky. What is on his stick? What is What is this? A heart? A sea creature? Or is it just a staff? Is it not something edible? I, I don't know. And look at the background of the Dreamweaver. There are a lot of people in not, you know, in not a great, great shape. Let me let me ex explain it like that. But, okay, the art's super interesting, but what it does is maybe even more interesting. So Rasputin Dreamweaver enters the battlefield with seven dream counters on it. Remove a dream counter from Rasputin and add X amount of mana, right? So basically when you play this, you get seven dream counters. You can take them off at any time to get seven mana, which is pretty good. Remove a dream counter from Rasputin. Prevent the next one damage that will be dealt to Rasputin this turn. So that's another option. So you can use it for mana or you can use it to prevent damage to the Dreamweaver. Then, let's see, what else? At the beginning of your upkeep, if Rasputin started to turn untapped, put a dream counter on it. Rasputin cannot have more than seven dream counters on it. Okay, so in other words, if you've used the dream counter, you'll get at least one dream counter back the next turn. So I guess there are a lot of shenanigans you can do with this because it does give you the option to get seven mana in one go. So you play it in turn six. Or if you've got some ramp a little bit earlier, and then the next turn you can use it to play something bigger. Um, yeah, so that could be interesting. You can also ramp it out with like cards like Dark Ritual, Black Lotus, of course. So ramp it out earlier in the game, and then use it to play a big bomb. I guess. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there are things you can do with Rasputin. Let me know in the comments below if you've played with the Dreamweaver, and what are some of the tricks that you've done with this card? Because it looks to me like a card that has a lot of potential, but at the moment, I just don't see it yet. I think you can also combine this with Taunus's Coffin, probably, because it, it, it's an ETB, right? The seven dream counters. So when it comes out of the coffin, it gets plus seven, right? That would be quite interesting. Anyway, um, these are, this is the last of the captains that are the last creature of blue and white. And after blue and white, we're gonna continue with black and blue. So again, we've got seven beautiful legendary creatures for you. Gonna start with quite an interesting one, Nebuchadnezzar, five mana to cast for a 3-3 three, three, with a really cool ability. X and tap, name a card. Opponent reveals X cards from his or her hand at random or the entire hand if uh, he or she doesn't have enough cards. And opponent then discards any of those cards that match the name you named. So, um, may only use this power during your turn. So, it's a sorcery ability. 
Uh, but it's really cool if you, for example, combine this with the glasses of Urza, you can already get a hit at the first try. So Nebuchadnezzar. Then we've got Princess of Lucrezia. That art, it's so Walt Disney to me. Right, with the evil queen. Uh, what does it do actually? It's not that, <laughs> it's not that uh, impressive. It's a 5-4 for 6, which is something, I guess. You can tap it for a blue mana. Uh, and then we've got Ramirez de Pietro, the true, the true pirates of old school magic. It's a 4-3 first striker for 6 mana, right? Very expensive. Then we've got Ramses Overdark, which is kind of cool. Again, an Italian copy. This is a 4-3 for 4. Well, actually not for 4. I wish it was 4. It's 6. Would be a lot better if it was 4. 4-3 four, for 6. Tap it, destroy a creature that has an enchantment on it. So that's quite interesting, right? If you maybe make a deck with enchantment alterations and you play with a lot of enchant creatures, it could be quite nice. Maybe um, add a, a Skull of Orm to get the enchantments back. Just a lot of shenanigans that you can do with this card. Then we've got a Riven Turnbull, seven mana for five, seven. I mean, at least you've got seven toughness and you can tap it for an extra black. Then we've got uh, Shiviti Scarzam, which is a 6-4 for 7. So basically worse than a Crowworm. But I mean, the art's pretty cool and it's just an awesome, like, creature. Who doesn't want to cast, like, a Shiviti Scarzam, you know? It can tame dragons, right? So that's pretty impressive. Um, and then you have Ur-Drago. So this is a 4-4 four, four for 7. A 4-4 four, four first striker and creatures with Swampwalk may be blocked as if they did not have this ability. So, I mean, this is probably family of the uh, of our friend Costa Dirk, right? I mean, they both look at characters that just came out of Mad Max. Really, really nice, especially to Ur Drago. So these are the black and blue cards. Now we're gonna continue with the black and the red ones. And here we have the seven uh, black and red creatures, legendary creatures from Legends. So this is Axelrod of Gunnarsson. Eight to cast, guys. I mean, these all these cards are so expensive to cast. It's like you need your game to last forever if you want to cast these. But anyway, it's a five-five. Uh, you're, you're probably playing playing multiplayer when you when you play with these, so probably the game is gonna take forever. Um, it's eight mana for a five-five with Trample. This is an Italian copy, as you can see. Um, it's, it's got a very weird second ability. It says, whenever a creature dealt damage by Axelrod this turn dies, you gain one life, and Axelrod deals one damage to target player or planeswalker. Um, again, I think it has some kind of potential. Maybe if you can let it fight a lot of different creatures. Somehow, maybe in modern magic, you can take use of it. I mean, every time a creature dies that's been dealt damage by the Gunner's Son, it's... Um, you know, your opponent takes damage, you gain a life. That's pretty good. Uh, and then we've got Barktooth Warbeard. And except for a very cool name, it's just a 6-5 vanilla for 7. Then we've got Abora's Devil Boon, which I think is super cool because it can make tokens. And, and look at that art. But let me take it out. Look at that art. Isn't that cool? Boris Devil Boon, 5 to cast, a 2-2. Two -two. Four and tap, put a minor demon token into play and treat this token as a 1-1 one, one red and black creature. So again, if you've got a Gauntlet of Might, it becomes a 2-2. Two, two. If you've got a Bad Moon, it becomes a 3-3 three, three if you have both of them in play. It's actually pretty sweet. Um, and then we have a Lady Orca, just a vanilla, but it's a 7-4, seven so 7 power. There are not a lot of 7 power creatures in the game. Um, Pavo Maliki, you can bump a Pavo Maliki. It's a red, it's a, it's a black though for plus one plus O. I mean, I wish they would have said maybe red for plus one plus O and green for plus O plus one, or I mean a black for plus O plus one. It would still be bad, but it would be a little bit more playable. Oh yeah, this one is really cool. So I've got, got the Italian version. Um, this is a five, five. This is really nice. This is um, the, 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 the Lord of the, of the Kobolds. So Roga of Kirk Keep, and uh, it's two, as you can see, it's six to cast, like two red, two black, and two for a five, five. So six for a five, five, not too bad. Um, but then the thing is, all your kobolds, but only your kobolds of Kirk Keep, so not all your kobolds, but all your kobolds of Kirk Keep 
get plus two, plus two, which is huge, right? Um, so they're O1 creatures, and then they would turn into two, three creatures, which is good. During your upkeep, though, you've got to pay three red. If you don't, something really weird happens. Because if you don't, Roga of Kerkeep and all creatures named Kobolds of Kerkeep uh, go to the opponent. So what happens is you tap your Roga if you don't pay the, the three red. And then um, an opponent gains control of the Roga and all the Kobolds of Kerkeep. So they're simply going to go somewhere else. Which is, I guess, in a way, maybe hilarious that you can, you know, you can, you, you can see the kobolds moving around the table. Oh, lo, 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 lo. But I mean, there are just a few things about this card that I wish it would have, it would have changed. I mean, maybe make the upkeep cost a little bit more modest. Maybe a, a black and a red, and maybe say give all kobolds plus two plus two instead of only the kobolds of Kerkeep. It would still be a bad card. It would not be too powerful, but at least you could kind of brew with the card, right? Or am I or am I being unreasonable? Let me know in the comments below if you think I'm being unreasonable. Just tell me. You know, I'm a grown-up man. I, I can take it. Tell me. But I think I'm being reasonable. Anyway, uh, let's continue with the last uh, bunch of cards, and they are the green and the red ones. Okay, well, let's take a look at the last seven creatures in the 55 card collection. And then you've seen all the legendary creatures and legends. How cool is that? So this is Gerard of the Closed Fist. Again, very cool name. I also like the art. I love the shield here with the Closed Fist logo. Uh, but it's just a 6-5 six, for 6. That is what it is. Um, then you've got Livania Silone or Siloni, not quite sure how to pronounce it. Six mana, this is an Italian copy. It's got first strike, four for first strike, and it's got something very unique. It has legendary land walk, which is pretty cool. Then we've got the uh, Else Dragon, Marhold Else Dragon, a legend, of course, as well. Rampage one, it's a four six for six mana. I mean, what I like about this, this card is it's got Rampage, which is a bad ability, I know, but then you can kind of Make a deck with Rampage creatures, and this would be in it. And it's got the right colors for Rampage, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, in that same deck, I would probably play a Stang. Stang is pretty cool. Stang is a 3-4 a, a for, for 6, which is not great. But when it comes to play, you get a twin token. So you've got another Stang. So there are two Stangs. So you get two creatures for the price of one. The problem, though, is if one of the two creatures gets killed, the Stang token leaves play. If the Stang token gets killed, the original Stang leaves play as well so that's kind of you know difficult but yeah if again you can you can use the bounce effect that i discussed during the houses on of tamar so if you use that bounce effect then the token gets in the game and it's not linked to the original stack so that's that's something you could do um Sinastian falconer so this card is a four four for five mana you can tap it for two mana so it's kind of a very expensive soul ring you know who doesn't love that uh, then we've got a 5-5 five, five for 6, just a vanilla, again, very cool flavor, it's got some cool lore as well, love the art, let me just, you know, let me take it out of the sleeve, let's take a look at the art, ooh, it's double sleeved even, very random, some cards are double sleeved, others I didn't, Beaut I just love this, man, so look at that, the, the third eye, very, very cool, love the colors, is it, um, is this Richard Kane Ferguson, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so nice when you've got such a unique style that you can just recognize it. Um, and then we've got the last card of our 55 cards that we discussed in this video. It's quite a lot. Are you still with me? If you're still with me, let me know in the comments below by just commenting Deathlock in the comments. Four mana for Tuknir Deathlock. And this is such a cool card. It's a 2-2 two -two flyer and it's like a, like a mini giant growth ability. I love it. Beep, beep, beep. Again, very useful in this color combination, for example, you could combine it with Tracker, make your Tracker a 4-4 and let it kill some creatures. If you then also have a Wailuli Wolf, wow, then you can actually make your Tracker into a 5-5 and do some work. That's You can take down a Sheevan with a Tracker. That's pretty good. Put a regeneration on it. Oh, man, I so want to build this deck. Anyway, um, these are all the legendary creatures. I hope you have enjoyed uh, this video. So here we see the Elder Dragons. And uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please let me know in the comments below. 
uh, by liking this, sharing it on your socials, and of course, commenting. I would really appreciate it. For now, thank you very much for watching, and let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, somber gezien.